What's up, fam? How are we doing? Okay, I'm excited to be back. Make some noise if you're just like feeling good down in your spirit. You're feeling okay? Feeling good? Okay. Uh, I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. I don't know why that I'm, I, I just reminded uh, myself of that one song that says, I feel good. Life in the fast night. You remember that? Shout out to one of my friends from high school, Toronto, who wrote that song. If you're ever watching this, shout out, man. Uh, but I feel good. And the reason that I feel good is, um, is even though worship's done and the dancing's over for a few minutes and hands aren't being raised, is, um, is I believe uh, in, in preaching. Um, I do. And some of you are like, well, that's good uh, because I actually plan to have that be a part of what I do for the rest of my life. But I, I believe in it. And, and honestly, this week I was in my office one night and I was kind of like asking myself, Josh, do you really think that like a message like this or content throughout a semester can actually re like really make a difference? And as I was thinking about it, and I don't know if like that voice was from the evil one or if it was just kind of a contemplative thought, I didn't really dig in that deep. But as I thought about it, the answer is yes, I believe in it. I believe in, in this, not because I'm great, because I'm really not, not because, uh, you know, like the other guys who are going to speak up here are great, but, but, but because God's great. And he promises that this word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. He says that this word is a weapon. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It cuts down deep into the depths of who we are. It's useful for teaching and encouraging and rebuking and emboldening and empowering. And this word shines a light on the God of the universe who not only created us, but, but who created us to know him. And so I believe in, in the power of preaching because I believe in the power of, of this. I do. And so I was super excited this week as I was kind of planning out the content, not only for tonight, but, but for the rest of the semester. So I'm excited for the next 25 minutes. I'm excited for September 8th and September 15th and September 22nd and September 29th. And you guys get the picture throughout the rest of the semester when other communicators are gonna be up here, um, when I'm gonna be up here again, not, not because we're super great, but because God is and because this word is. And so if you guys wouldn't mind, is it okay if we just like pray one more time over our semester together uh, that God would use this word to impact our lives. Father, I pray pray that we not only enter into this time and this space and these weeks uh, to be entertained, thinking, oh man, I hope it's a good one tonight. Hope there's some funny stories. Hope that it's engaging. But Lord, I pray that we come in here ready to receive and apply what you have to say to us, believing that your word truly is the lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, believing that this word is powerful that it cuts down deep into who we are. It convicts us, it challenges us, it encourages us, and it points us to Jesus. And I pray that your word does not return void this semester like you promise. I pray that as middle schoolers, as high schoolers, we can have a reverence and an excitement for the words that you have for us this semester to where we can go out into our world and be a little bit more like Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray. And everybody said... Amen. Okay, awesome. Well, hey, here's, we're going to like dive right in. And what I want to start out by saying is, is, is this. Jesus doesn't just want to get you into heaven someday. He wants to radically transform your life today. Jesus does not just want to get you into heaven someday, although that's part of the whole gospel message, but he wants to radically transform your life today. He wants you to be changed. He wants you to be joy-filled. He wants you to be anchored in peace. He wants you to be drenched in the love of God, confident in who you are, free from the approval of others. He wants you to be a living testimony of who Jesus sets free, like we're, we're, we're actually free. We are free indeed. He has a message for you not only to believe, not only for you to believe in, but for you to live in. He has a reality for you to literally just like stay in, rest in. He has a space for you to occupy. And then here's the tension. Here's the dilemma, because some of you guys know this. For you, for the life that you're living as a middle schooler, high schooler, college student, maybe adult leader in the room, there's a gap. <laughs> there's a gap between that life, the life that Jesus calls us to live, and the life that we're living. For some of you, you like kind of laugh at the idea of being anchored in peace. Sounds cute, but I don't know if that's realistic. Some of you guys like laugh at the idea of like being confident in who you are, not worrying about, you know, finding approval in other people. Some of you are like, Jesus, that's great. I believe in you, but I don't necessarily know if this abundant life that you have called me to is actually the life that I am living. There's a gap. 
There's a gap between your life and the life that Jesus has called you to. How many of you guys like to travel, go on like vacations and stuff, okay? I like to travel. I think it's fun. I really do. I think, uh, I think it's a good time. I like the culture. I like the food, like the restaurants you get to go try. Um, I like the married things that happen more often in hotel rooms than when you're at your own house. Um, uh, yeah, I know. Um, it's actually not. Actually, it's a gift from God. It's beautiful. Um, it's, it's holy. It, may, it leads me to worship, actually. Come on, somebody. Um, in fact, uh, it's my wife's birthday. Um, it's my wife's birthday. So, yeah, Abby, happy birthday. Um, so good. I won't sing necessarily because you, you would punch me if I did, but I, uh, I, I, I do want to say happy birthday, girl. Um, and so, anyways, we like to travel. We're excited. Um, but traveling is expensive, okay? So students, don't take it for granted when your parents take you on a vacation because it costs a lot of money, okay? No matter where you go, it costs a lot of money. So what we've done to like offset the cost of that is we rent out our house for Airbnb when we are on vacations. In fact, there's a whole week that's open in October. So if you have family coming in town, um, <laughs> students, if you're just getting tired of your parents and you're just trying to get out the house, um, Airbnb, uh, the Brick Beauty is available. Uh, that's, the, that's the name of our home. A A Abby named it that, the Brick Beauty. I thought it was arrogant. I was like, don't do it, but that's all right. She's a work in progress. So the Brick Beauty is available mid-October if you are interested. Um, but, but how the people get into our house, okay? How the people get into our house for Airbnb is that we have a Okay, so we give them a code to, to press when they, <laughs> to, to get in the house. And just a couple weeks ago, really, kind of something kind of happened and we were like, we should change the code because there have been dozens of people in our house and we never changed it. So there are like dozens of people across the country that could get into our house at any time they wanted to. The code was 3357. We changed it to 1697. Okay, 8712 Charlton Lane, just in case any of you are wondering. I'm kidding. I'm not going to tell you that. If I did, I was thinking this week, if I did, I think I'd walk in one night to a 10th grader in my living room saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I don't have a gun, but if I did, I'd shoot you in the face. <laughs> uh, too, too far, Josh, too far, way too far. Um, yeah, that was way too far. Um, <laughs> but, but, but it's funny, we like changed the code and for a couple weeks, Honestly, it would take me a while to get into the house. It would take me a while to get into the house because I, I kept pressing the wrong buttons. I kept pressing 3357 and that wasn't the code anymore. So like, so like when I pressed the old buttons, when I'd press the old code, like even though I knew in my mind there was a new code, I'd forget I'd keep pressing the old buttons and I couldn't get to where I wanted to go. I couldn't get into my home, into the space that I wanted to rest in and relax in, it took me a while. And, and I, wanna, I wanna make it really clear, like I knew, I knew that there was a house for me to be in. I knew that there was a new code, but, but I couldn't get in because I, I kept pressing the old ones. I believed it. I believed in my mind there was a new code. I knew it intellectually, but I, but I didn't actually live like it. And so the reason that I share that is, is believing in God is not enough for you to actually live out the life that he's called you to live. This semester as a middle schooler, like intellectually believing in God, it's not enough for you to actually live out the life that God has created you to live. It's important, but scripture says that even the demons, what? Believe and shudder. For a lot of us, the reason that there's a gap between the life we're living and the life that Jesus lives is because we're just stuck pressing the same old buttons, same old patterns of life, same old code of conduct, same old friendships, same old places we hang out, same old habits. The reason that there's a space between, again, our lives and the life that God calls us to live is we forget as Jesus followers, there is, there is a radical call to constantly put off, the, put off the old and to put on the new. For some of you, you're, you're, you're honestly kind of frustrated. It's a few months after big stuff, school started, and you're not as excited as you were last year. You're not as excited or passionate about Jesus as you were a few months ago. And you're thinking, God, why? 
Why do I feel this way? Why is the life that I'm not, why is the life that I'm living not lining up with the life that you promised? This life and life to the full. And I just want you to be encouraged that this life is for the taking. It's available to you. God has it right there. It's available. But I also want you to be challenged because it's up to you. It's up to you. For some of you, you've settled for for belief and belief alone. And and James says that really that's no faith at all. So there are some steps that you need to take. There are some decisions that you need to make. There's a path that you need to go down. There is a way that you need to get on if you actually want to live out the life that God has designed you to live out. It's, It's up to you. It's up to you. But I want to make it really clear that this life probably isn't going to come natural. This way probably is not going to be the easy way. In fact, it's not. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be countercultural. Your friends probably aren't going to be living this way if you're in middle school or high school. It's not going to be the norm. And so the first challenge tonight is this. This semester, we're going to reject the easy way. We're going to reject the easy way. I love what the proverb writer says. He says this, there is, a, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. There's a way that appears to be right. There's a way that feels right. There's a way that everybody else is going and you're like, I'm gonna hop on that train. But in the end, the proverb writer says, it leads, it leads to death. To death. I see this clearly in, in, in my nieces, okay? Again, I forgot to show you a picture. Dang it. Um, but we have a two year old niece named Tallulah, one year old niece named Adelaide, and they like just like having fun, okay? They like having fun. They like going outside. They like, you know, pleasure. They like going to playgrounds. They like, you know, like just kind of exploring. And, and honestly, they're just like all over the place. Like, let's do this. Let's do that. Animal park, turtle park, you know, like all these different places they want to go to. And and I see it so clearly. I see this so clearly in their lives. When we take them out on a walk, okay? So like if they're like, let's go outside. We'll go outside. We'll take them on a walk. Immediately, Tallulah will do this. I'm running. I'm running. She'll start laughing. She'll start sprinting. She's going to be pretty athletic. So it looks pretty like natural to her. And then Adelaide starts going like this, okay? And she's not going to be athletic. She's not at all. She won't play sports. I can already tell. But, but she starts running. And the reason that I share that is it just feels so good. We're free. We're outside. We're not inside. We're going to take off running. And honestly, if we weren't there, if we weren't saying, hey, stay on the sidewalk, they would die. They would get hit by a car immediately. And I know you're like, this is a goofy example. This like really isn't relevant in my life. They're one and they're two. Okay, let's be a little more practical for you. At times, maybe not right now, so I don't want to speak this over your life if you're in middle school and high school and you're like, I'm not there yet. But maybe at a point in your life, it's just going to feel good. It's going to feel right. It's going to appear to be the right way to go get hammy jammied with your friends. Okay, let's go drink some beer. Let's go play some drinking games. Let's go to the parties. Let's take some shots, shots. You know, like, like let's do it. It just appears to be right. Everybody else is doing it, okay? It's gonna be so fun. Feels right, that's what we should do, absolutely. Let's, 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 let's smoke the weed, okay? Let's drink the alcohol. It just appears to be right. Or maybe you're gonna start dating someone, middle school, high school. And like, honestly, if you're dating them, you're probably gonna think like, she's fine. She's gonna probably think you're fine. And eventually, because other people in middle school and high school are hooking up and making sexual advances, you're gonna be like, this is just the right thing to do. Let's just go for it. Let's start experimenting a little bit. Like, like it just appears to be right. There's chemistry, and so let's go down in the basement and see what happens. Let's, let's not make sexual boundaries. Let's do whatever kind of feels right. Let's do whatever appears to be Right, or maybe even more practical, social media. It appears to be right to be on it nonstop. Some of you are on it right now. Let's just do it. Let's get on social media. It appears to be right. So in the morning, first thing let's do, let's check social media. I gotta check it. When we go home from school, when we're at school, let's just check it. When we're in our bedrooms at night, let's be on social media. Let's be on social media. Let's be on social media. Let's be on it six hours a day. I think that's the average for students. Let's just be on social media. It just appears to be 
right. Let's be lazy. Let's play video games. Let's just do whatever. Let's not worry about the homework. Let's eat whatever we want. There's a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. Well, name, name how, Josh? Okay, let's say you go out and you start getting hammy jammy with the friends. I don't know why I'm calling it hammy jammy. That's not in my notes. But let's say you go out and you start drinking with your friends and, and you're like, this just appears to be right. This is such a good time. There will be a time. There will be a time if you follow Jesus where you, where you, will desire more to, you will desire to influence them more than you'll desire to fit in with them. At one point in your spiritual journey, you will desire to influence your friends with the love of Jesus more than you desire to, to just fit in with them. And here's what I want you to know. If you desire, to, if you, if you desire that and you're like, let's just go out, let, but, but you know what, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what everybody else is doing. Your influence, dead, dead brings death into the influence that Jesus has for you to give to your students. And it doesn't mean that Jesus isn't in the business of, resurrect, of resurrecting things, bringing dead things to life, but, but make no mistake about it. There's a path, there's a way that leads to death. Here, 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 well, how about hooking up with my boyfriend or girlfriend, Josh? Feels right, it's fun. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Well, I know this, your brains aren't even fully developed yet. Okay, sex is a very powerful thing, scripture lets us know. And so you start experimenting with that stuff pretty soon, it, al it almost becomes borderline addicting, and now your relationship isn't built on friendship and actually loving someone, but it's actually built on hooking up and lusting after someone, and before you know it, y'all are gonna be broken up. It's just true. Because you built your relationship on something that God does not stand for, boom, relationship is dead. Innocence goes with it. Your view of the opposite sex goes with it as well. A way that appeared to be, to be right brought death about in your world. What about social media? It's not a big deal. That's just like, that's not what the statistics are showing. Anxiety and depression, it is skyrocketing amongst Gen Z, amongst your age. And before you know it, you're addicted you're addicted to the social media. Why do you think you're on it six hours a day? You're addicted to it. You're posting, you're answering questions. You're giving into the pressures of liking and commenting and hoping people like and comment. And before you know it, your freedom is dead. You're in bondage. You're a slave to your social media. And along with it, if you find your worth and the approval of others, which we do in social media, your self-esteem is gonna eventually die with it as well. There's a way that appears to be right but in the end, it leads to death. So we, we need to resist the easy way, but, but we also need to learn the way. We need, to, we, need to learn, we need to learn the way. For some of you, I can't just get up here and say resist the easy way because you're like, that's all I know. That's all I know. I've been doing that for a long time. I've been thinking that stuff for a long time. The only models in my life live like that. I don't, I don't even know the way. I don't know the right way. I don't know God's way. And so you need, to, you need to set out to learn God's way. Like saying, resist the easy way, that's not enough. Paul says this in Romans chapter 12, verse two. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. He says, he says, hey, it's not just enough for me to say, hey, be transformed, resist the easy way. No, how do we do that? We do that by the renewing of our mind, thinking about a different way, thinking about what God has for us, thinking about what God's will is, what God's way is. We need to set out to actually learn what this whole life is about. If Jesus really offers life and life to the full, we should know what this life looks like. I love what the prophet Jeremiah says to a rebellious people. And how many of you guys know we are a rebellious people? There are times in our life where we are not following Jesus. And he speaks in to the nation of, of Judah. And he says this, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Some of you guys are at crossroads right now. You can go this way or you can go that way. And you can feel it. You know, this way is calling but you know that this way is probably not the right way. And then you have God's way and you know that part of you like you're for this, but it's difficult. He says, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you'll find rest for your souls. But you said, which a lot of us say, we will not walk in it. We won't. We won't, which leads us to the next point. 
for a lot of us, this semester, we're going to learn the way. We're going to set out to learn the way. We're going to have devotionals ready for you for this next series. It's going to be an interactive series where you have content to inter interact with every day from the book of Philippians. It's going to be titled Normal Isn't Working, and I'm super excited about it. That's why I hope you guys get up here and bring all your friends. I think it's going to be super, super helpful. We're going to have some different speakers. It's going to be awesome. I'm fired up about it. We're going to set out to learn God's way, but let's be real. While all of us can know more, the issue isn't that you need to learn God's way. It's that you need to trust God's way. You've heard about it. You've been to the camp. You've heard the messages. You've read the Bible verses. You've heard the songs. And you know that there is a way that God has for you. But the issue is, and we might not say this, but as God says, hey, I give you life and life to the full. I give you life and life more abundant. I bring freedom. I bring joy. I bring hope for a lot of us. While we might not literally like say this, essentially what we're saying is, is I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I, I don't trust that. I trust the way that my friends are going. I trust the way that most of the kids at my school are going. I trust the way that culture tells me to go. But I don't really trust your way. I don't really trust your way. I saw an illustration this week and I was going to call someone up here, but I didn't practice it beforehand, and it could really be a disaster if I call someone up here. So I'm just going to kind of show you the illustration and, and what it was. And, and, and essentially, there were two chairs, okay? And if I called Jake Seidel up here, which he's ripped, he's a football player, he just signed at most State. Let's get it, Jake Seidel, okay? Segment football, they're going to win State. Um, and so, so if I called him up here and I said, Jake, which seat do you want to sit in? <laughs> There's this seat. Wh which seat would you say that you want to sit in? The big one, right? Like it just looks better, right? That's like the way that kind of appears to be the, that's the way to go, right? And so I, yeah, it just looks like it'll hold you up, right? The other one you're just not sure about. It's a little bit sketchy. And if we were being honest, just based on the look of these chairs, Jake, okay? This is just me and you. This is me and you here, okay? If I said, Jake, this is like, this is God's way. <laughs> this is like, this is the seat that God wants you to sit in. This is the space that God wants you to occupy. Honestly, as I looked at the illustration, as I listened to the illustration, the preacher asked that guy that, and he was honest. He said, I think I still want to sit in the big one. Like, it just looks safer, looks easier, looks more relaxing. Pastor's like, Okay, that's what, that's what a lot of us do. That's what a lot of us do. This doesn't look like from the outside maybe the way to go. This looks a little safer. This looks like the way that most people are going. And so we're just going to sit here. Pastor who gave the sermon was just as big as you, just as strong as you. You might not believe that, but he was. And, and, and he said, what if I, what if I take a seat? in this chair. What if I take a seat and show you that, that it's going to hold you up? It, it's going to work. You can, you can trust in this chair. Not only can you know that this is a chair designed to hold you up, even though it looks small, but you can trust it because you've seen somebody else who's your size actually put, put, put their weight on it. And the guy in the illustration, Jake, he said, yeah, I'll sit on it. He went and sat down on the chair, it held him up. This was the chair that was designed for him to sit in and it, it worked. It was all good. And the whole point of the illustration was this, is it's not enough for you to, to like intellectually believe that Jesus is God. It's not enough for you to like intellectually believe that God has, has created a life for you that is, that is literally able to hold you up and sustain your, your soul and, and your whole life, but you have, to, you have to put your weight on it. You actually have to trust it. You actually have to say, hey, Jesus, I'm gonna take you at your word. And when you do that, when you do that, other people like Jake Seidel can take notice and say, yep, it, it works. It works. You, you want to trust Jesus more? You want to trust God's way for your life more? Find someone else who trusts God's way. Look at their life. Look at the joy. Look at the peace. Look at the hope. 
For some of you, you need to understand that you don't just need to trust God for you. You need to trust God for someone else. People are watching. People are watching. And if you sit in this chair, if you sit in this chair and it's just the easy way, it's the easy way and it's the easy way and they don't really have any examples of people actually putting their weight on what God says, it's gonna be hard for them to jump on board. So the reality is, I wanna ask you are, you, are you doing what the proverb writer says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord. Trust in God with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Are you trusting God more than you trust yourself? Are you trusting his way more than you trust your own? And if you're not, if you're not, your path is not going to be the straight and narrow path that God has for you. I think it's Matthew chapter 7. I think it's Matthew chapter 7, if we could throw it up on the screen. The charge is this. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. The reality is for many of us, the reality is for many of us, we sit here. We sit here. And it might not be appealing to the naked eye, but this is the life that we've been called to. The narrow way. The way that might not look appealing to the world, but the way that God has designed us for. And the charge is to, to put your weight on it to trust what God says about the life that he has for you. And, and, and while we're on topic, let's just, let's name the way. Let's, let's put a name on it. Let's put a name on it. So when students, when students see that you're sitting here, which I hope they do, students, I hope they do. I hope that they see you following Jesus. I hope they see you with, with, with a hope that the world doesn't know of, a peace that the world, again, has not really seen before. I hope that you can love people with the love that Jesus has given to you. And I hope that when students see you sitting on the seat that God has called you to sit in, I, can, I, can, I hope you can say, yeah, 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 that, 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 that's a way. And the way has a name and his name is Jesus. Jesus says what in John chapter 14? I am the way and the truth and the life. And you can say, yeah, 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 hey, hey Jesus promises me that he gives me life and life to the full. I'm just going to trust him. I'm gonna trust him. Jesus tells me to love people with the love that he has given me, and so I'm doing my best to love people with, 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 the way, with the love that he's given me. Jesus calls me to pray, and then peace will follow, and so I'm just gonna pray, and I'm gonna believe that Jesus is the way, and he knows the way, and peace is going to follow. Jesus says that even when the storm comes, there is a hope because he has overcome the world, and so I'm just gonna put my weight on what Jesus says. I am just gonna follow Jesus. That's the invitation. Jesus looks at human beings just like you and me, sinful human beings just like you and me, and he says two words, follow me. The goal of the Jesus follower is simple. It's to follow Jesus. He's the way. He's the way. He's the way. When people come, when, when people come asking questions, what's this, what's this whole thing about? It's, just, it's about Jesus. You want to learn about him? Come and see. You wanna ask some questions? I don't have all the answers, but I'll tell you what he's done in my life. I am following the way, and the way has a name, and that name is Jesus. Name it, name it. And then lastly, the charge is this. Name your way tonight. Name your way. What way are you on? What path are you on? Is it this seat, easy way? the way that leads to destruction in whatever form that looks like? Or is it the way that is maybe a little more difficult? The way that maybe has a little bit more resistance, but the way that Jesus promises that will lead to life. Again, this life, the life that Jesus has for us, it's for the taking. Be encouraged, the life is right there. Jesus isn't like hiding, hiding a new code. He's not like keeping himself from you. He's not keeping you distant from the life that he has for you. So be encouraged, but also be challenged because it's up to you. It's up to you. You're going to need to start pressing some new buttons. You're going to start taking some new steps. You're going to have to learn the way. You're going to have to trust the way. And you're going to have to figure out, figure out which way you're going to take. Let's pray. Father, we love you and we're grateful for you and no matter where we're at, 
uh, tonight, it would be pretty hard to deny that, that the easy way, that the way that everybody else is taking, that the way that, and, and Lord, we know what that is, it would be pretty hard to deny that that way just doesn't really work. It might be fun for a season, it might be exciting, it might be captivating for a little bit, but it doesn't work. God, it leads to bondage. It leads to spiritual decay. It leads to bringing dead things about in our lives. So, Father, I pray that we can trust you. I pray that we can take you at your word. I pray that through coming to know you, because you are the way, through coming to trust your character, we can actually begin to believe that life with you is the best life possible, that the way you have for us is the best way available, that the steps you want us to take are so much more rewarding than the easy ones we could take apart from you. Father, I pray that we can be honest with ourselves tonight. I pray that if we're on the wrong way, if we're on the wrong path, we can be so bold as to ask you to help us with that, to give us a, 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 a desire to actually follow you. And God, I trust that as we know you, as we give our attention to you, our appetite for you and for your way will grow. And so this semester, more than anything, I pray that together we can pursue Jesus, that we can seek him out, that we can trust him, that we can acknowledge him in all our ways, and we can trust that in the meantime, you will, you will, you promise to make our way, to make our paths straight. We trust you. And God, for those of us that don't, I, I pray that you help us with our lack of trust. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing this last song.